joining us here. And so what we want to do tonight is, or <laughs> tomorrow morning, <laughs> in the morning, what we want to do is, is basically do a virtual data and design workshop. Uh, so this is going to be able to go into uh, a fair bit of detail on some of the requirements for the project. And those of us that are here is uh, yeah, I'm Jim Pollock, and I'm going to be taking the business lead from BusinessWorks, or from uh, uh, from AWARE standpoint. And then we've got Chad Hansel, and Chad is our uh, program manager, and he'll be the one that probably has the most interface with you once we get uh, really rolling here in this next very short period of time. And then Stuart Collis, across here, is our uh, chief technology officer, and really is responsible for the overall architecture and design of our platform. And so he'll be also interacting with you uh, as we go along. So we'll be the three people, the three voices and names that you'll hear the most uh, as we move forward. And there'll be some other engineers and other people involved at various levels. But we'll be the, the ones that are talking to you all the most. And why don't, why don't you all do a quick introduction of those of you in the room so we at least have an idea of who all is there. Thank you, Jim. And uh, thank you, Chad, and other colleagues at David team. And uh, I, I'm glad after our kickoff meeting, and uh, we made this possible, the first virtual design workshop after having repeated telephone calls and the Skype meeting. And thanks for your flexibility in having some flexible timings and even joining us late in the evening. I think it's 9 o'clock for you, 9 p.m. or 9? Uh, exactly, yes. Thanks, Jim. So, yeah, as, as proposed, we would like to hear from you for the next steps. How do we need to move on this one? From our side, so I, I'm Dilip Kumar, and uh, I, I, I'm project uh, sponsor for the AVIR Equisat Data Management Project. And we have the Chukka Srinivasa. He's the data management specialist who will be joining with us. And, uh, yeah, he, he's the guy coordinate most of these activities and closely work with you all. And uh, we, we have a IT manager for yeah, I'm Modi Pradeep Modi. And who will provide the IT support on this project. And uh, we, we have the topical legumes to leader, Dr. Gauda, CLL Gauda, he's here. And uh, we have Tushar Shah who used it to help us on the data management related activities. And he's here. You, you know him. He's the one participated in the equipment gathering along with CLL Gauda also. And we have Abhishek Rato, who is the data curator and both tropical legumes and the whole project. And we have our other KSI team who is helping us, Kiran and uh, Farid and Upender. And we have Venka too, who is recording this one. Hope you don't mind recording this one and make it available for our team who could not be able to access this one from uh, Mali and Nairobi because of the, the time zone differences. Well, I, I should have worn a tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's why, like, I, as I mentioned in the early, yesterday email, we would like to have three design workshops. Hope for, that would be okay with the team and we can see the progress of our work also, how we will be moving before we have these on-site design workshops and that, that help us, the team, to perform the ta tasks efficiently and more effectively and also help us to go for the requirement gathering and also understand the data sets and the data harmonizing part also is required. So the first workshop we are starting because we, we have pretty much control here at uh, Patanjaru, so this is an initiation. This is the preferred time zone for the colleagues at Patanjaru. And in the next one, we will have at uh, Mali, that's the preferred time zone for them, and we will make our adjustments to according to their time. And the next one will be in Nairobi, and that's the preferred time zone for the Nairobi colleagues, and the other colleagues either see the recording session or adjust our timings. And the on-site workshop, we all will meet in Nairobi, and we are going to decide the dates because there are some issues with the hope the objective leaders and the project leaders have work. And with that introduction, shall, shall we start, Jim? And now the floor is all yours. Of course, this is a virtual floor. Well, thank you very much. And, and of course, uh, please be, feel free to ask questions as we go along. But uh, we're very excited about this project. We're very excited to work with all of you. 
And we think that there's going to be a lot of very interesting learning, you know, on both sides, from our side and from your side, we hope, as well. So what we want to, to uh, accomplish today, very specifically, is one, just give you a little summary, you know, of where we are right now. We've got our teams established. We've got uh, some preliminary data that we've seen from the projects. And we'll have a statement kind of at the end about, you know, where we're going. But then there's two things very specifically we want to accomplish today, and that is to identify and prioritize the data that we want to be able to load in the system and what the status of that data is in, in each, each individual piece of data or data set. And then we also are going to begin moving very quickly towards having some very consistent templates for gathering ongoing data. I think one of the big problems in very, very large-scale projects where you have many, many people gathering data in many countries for different aspects of a project, different crops, you know, different uh, aspects of a project. It's very difficult to have good, consistent quality and consistent formats of data. So that's one of the things that we want to work with you on is not only help make this a very successful project, but to have an ongoing legacy that in the future you'll be even better prepared to start, initiate new projects and be more effective higher quality and higher consistency of data. And also we want to talk, so we want to talk about data and we also want to talk about the actual user roles and what the reporting needs are. So we want to make sure we understand what data we have available and then what specific analysis and specific types of reports that we want to be able to generate for each of the different users. So we're going to talk about the different types of users and what they will actually be able to see and, and use. So, right from our, from our statement of work document, um, kind of a nice summary of a couple of the key business requirements that we're trying to reach are one is to integrate and provision TL2 and HOPE project data so that it's very easily accessible by all of your internal personnel. So we want to make sure across the entire project, across all countries, or in fact, well, both projects, and across all countries and all your crops that you're studying, we want to make all that information very easily accessible for all your personnel. Number two, we want to enable your internal personnel to be able to provide controlled accessibility of all this data to a large group of external users, all the way from donors to partners to field people to a large audience of people to be able to control what information they have access to and make it available to them. And I think a key thing is is we want this project in this immediate next few months to be a preliminary demonstration of the accessibility of the data uh, by uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the other, other donors you have to be able to provide accessibility to them. And then kind of specifically here, we think a key, and this is once again right out of the statement of work, a very key objective and a key value of the project that we want to create is that the project will include data analysis, data collection, and data provisioning efforts to preliminarily demonstrate HOPE and TL2's long-term data management capabilities and potential. And to paraphrase that, we want to help you clean up and provision your existing data, and we want to prepare you for very good, consistent data collection practices as you go into the future. And then in the long term, Ideally, we want to have one common platform that can cross multiple Likrasat projects, so it'll be very easy for any of your projects to share data between themselves. So, as the status of where we are right now, of course, we've already identified, you know, who the project teams from the AWARE standpoint, you know, myself, Jim Pollock, Chad Hansel, Stewart. There's also uh, a gentleman named Bo Bush, who's our IT manager that's responsible for our data center and all of its uh, infrastructure. So a name that you may hear. But as I say, mostly myself and Chad will be the two key contacts that you'll have the most uh, ongoing relationship with. And of course, from your side, you've identified, you know, Dilip as a project sponsor, George and Emmanuel as project managers. Uh, Chuka, glad to have you aboard and joining. That sounds like you'll be starting at full speed. Um, and then also, uh, representing the user profiles, I think, uh, Dilip, you mentioned there's Tom Hash, and right now, I, I, I'm, I've just put down a manual for the moment, 
for TL2 until you've identified someone there, but someone responsible for the user roles and the types of reports, things they want to have. I yeah, didn't to interfere you on this one. Like we, we have identified three people from tropical legumes and their hope also. I will share with you that information, and this is a little different than the earlier document. And other than that, uh, if you could correct me as a project leader, that would be wonderful. Okay. So I would like to see myself as a project leader rather than a project sponsor. Would okay. that be okay? And no problem at all. Thank you. We have that technology to change that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. As long as uh, you agree to that, we have no problem. <laughs> because uh, our sponsor is uh, slightly different than uh, what you may be understanding. Okay. Because the sponsor for us means all the one who really provides all the funding and everything. The money guy. <laughs> I'm not a money guy. Oh. I, and the gym also made for the kind of technology to change these names and other thing, as long as you are not adding any additional charges, that would be okay with that. We, we think we can do that for very, very, very low cost. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> no, that's not a problem there. So we will make we will definitely make those changes there. Okay. Thank you. So, for, once again, from the contract that we have between us, we have a series of milestones of which today, right now, we're in the middle of really focusing on this milestone B. So, the original milestone A, um, let me see, I can only see. Let me grab a little pin and arrow here. Okay, there we go. So, hey, I can draw. Okay. Um, so, the milestone A was basically just getting things started, getting our staffing commitments, and just the initial plan to get started, which you've already done. So currently we're working on milestone B. So the key things we're trying to accomplish right now is to go to a much more detailed project plan, which we're going to be having laid out for you in this next few days. Uh, this data and design workshop, which we're going to do this a version here, and we'll have some additional contact along this line. And then also we want to talk, we'll be talking about the user interface workflow. Not the user interface itself, but the workflow that a user would go through to access and, and uh, analyze data. And then also uh, basically doing an analysis of the initial data sets. So those are the things we're very want to be focused on right now and really get accomplished in this next week or so. Um, and then from then on, from Milestone C, in, in, in the next month time frame, we want to actually have uh, all the existing data sets. We're going to try to have them all collected, provisioned, and integrated so we can have first views of actually having data live in the system. And then also uh, Milestone D is where we get into actually a full launch of what we call our evaluation module, which gives you the ability to analyze data. And then I, and finally, milestone E at the end of month seven is we're going to be able to hopefully have everything up and running and have a nice review of the project. And of course, from then on, the system will just be running and you have access to information. So now we want to focus in on this milestone B. So we want to work on getting a detailed project plan in front of you. This uh, workshop we're working on right now, a define the workflows for that the users will experience. And then, and, and probably tonight, the thing we'll spend, the, or tomorrow, today, the thing we'll spend the most time on is uh, going through this initial assessment, kind of inventorying and assessing all the data that's going to be needed and required for the project here. So with that, in, again, very specifically, these are the two things we want to talk about now. So let's get into the data identification and prioritization. So what data is available? And then also we want to talk about the user roles and requirements, and then how we go about it, which means how do we go about analyzing and reporting this. So for the data that's going to be loaded into the system for HOPE and the TL2 projects, there'll be two, there's two types of data. Uh, one is the... Uh, one is the data uh, that's your project data, so it's the trials data, baseline data, adoption data, the three types of data that will be included that's your data that's been collected. And the second type of data is the contextual data sets. These are data sets that we're going to supply that complement the data that you have. So there'll be data from FAO, a country level data, 
World Bank Africa Development Indicators, which is country level, and then also the Harvest Choice, which is the spatial allocation models or SPAM models that have a much a very high uh, resolution, five arc minute baselines. So these are data sets that will always be available and available at the same time you're looking at your data to provide additional context and comparison. So very specifically, as far as your data, we hit each of those. There's going to be the trials data. And what we want here is we're not trying to replace your ag trials database at all. What we want to be able to do is just to draw a subset of the information that's very important and pertinent that complements your adoption and baseline information. And so, for example, from the trial data, that might be trial locations, milestone dates, crop types, yields. So just some base information. Again, not trying to replace the ag trial databases that you already are using. And then for baseline data, of course, that's the surveys that you've collected as the basis of future comparisons for adoption surveys, and then the actual adoption data itself. That's, uh, and, and basically what we've committed at this point is to get any of the data that you've already collected, and we want to make sure there's an ongoing practice for adding new data as we go along. And so what we'd like to be able to do tonight is really under, or today, is to just better understand the status of the, of the data that you have and what's going to be available for us and, and, and get established very quickly a process for getting this data integrated. So, just jumping right in and getting into the data. So the data sets that we've been given as samples so far are, are these, basically some Excel spreadsheets from uh, the TL2 project. And so some of the names of the files there, the Fort Chickpea, Karataka, uh, Data Common Bean, Data Ground Nut for India, Soybean, et cetera. So these are the data files that we've been given as examples. And then from the HOPE, we have a couple of spreadsheets and then a very, a fairly large, about a six megabyte, uh, or actually large, quite larger than that, a, a database that has a lot of data organized by, uh, by the, the um, uh, object objectives, sorry. So ideally what we'd like to do is take an inventory of this information and all the other data that and then prioritize what information you all want to have loaded into the system. And what we want to do is basically fill out, this is the, the two, the spreadsheet that we provided to you there, and, and we'll make that live in just a second. But the idea there is what we want to be able to do is do an inventory of all the data sets. So in this case, we're looking at, for example, each file of information. So the left-hand side would be the name of a data set. And then what kind of format it's in, the uh, date that it was provided, what type is this, uh, what, 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 what's the category? Is it a baseline data? Is it trial data? Is it adoption data? Which project is it associated with? What objective is it associated with? What geography does this data set cover? Is it, uh, is it a whole country? Is it part of a country? We want to get down to what resolution. Is this household information? Is it uh, state level, ward level, et cetera? What is the lowest resolution the data was collected at? What time period was that data collected? Um, what crops are covered? So really we're trying to fill at a high level, just characterize each of the data sets so we have a basic understanding of what time, what geography, and what attributes are being captured. I'm going to flip over to you. Yeah, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just this is Stuart. Um, we also just, you know, so this is just based on what we've been provided so far. So we would also like to hear uh, of any additional data sets that you may have already been working on, uh, perhaps um, in addition to what we have, or perhaps as a, a new version of what we have. So we just want to identify each one of those data sets as we go through here. Perfect. If we could do I think if you could share the screen. Yeah. Let me just take notes. Oh, yeah. How do I share my screen again? Yeah, Jim, if, if, if you can, if you can see the same. Yeah. One. Yeah. For, for no, I, he pushed it up. Can you, can you share your screen? 
Uh, that's what I'm working. So, so you you pushed up a share to me before, and I don't see that right now. I on the pod. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, I think share six, no? Here we go. Yeah, you can share your screen. Yeah, share. Yeah. No, no, there's something else. Okay, sir. So the one? Are you seeing my screen? No, 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 this is... Okay. No, he has to share the screen, not we. Are you, are you seeing my screen now? No. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. No, actually, from your side, you have to share it. No, go to ports and share your screen. Sorry, could you read the third tab, Jim? On the top, you can see the meetings, layouts, parts. You said layouts. Oh, layouts, okay. Yeah. So you already did that. Yeah. Next one, parts. If you go to the parts, there is an option share. Share. Okay. So, are you seeing uh, are you seeing a sp my spreadsheet now? Yeah, one minute. I'll, I'll, I'll increase the size. Now you can go to the past and click on the share button. Mm -hmm. no, it's only share. We are doing maximum. Yeah, this is the same one. No, this is actually Excel sheet. Yeah. I'll say full screen. Let's see. Yeah. Now we can see now. We can see now. Sir. Okay. So, as you mentioned, what we want to be able to do is identify each of the data sets that we want to be able to include. And, and, what the, and the idea of this sheet is to be a summary that gives us a kind of a metadata of the, of the data sets themselves that helps us describe these overall data sheet of the, the data sets. Um, so, the geography that they cover, the time range. You know what crops are covered, the attributes of what crops, a priority of it, because at some point we might be a, uh, you know, making sure that we make sure that we include all the, the most important data sets that you have, and then a person who's responsible for that data set who collected it and is the point of contact to provide if there's any questions to be able to answer any questions about it. Then we'll keep just some other things as far as some comments. Also, we'll be keeping track of uh, has it gone through a quality check. Uh, has it been staged? Is it ready to be loaded up in our system? Has it already been loaded? So those are some kind of a little bit of a data flow, as it were, for each of these different data sets that we want to do. So do you want to just get? So at this point, I'd say, are there any questions about this? And then are we? And I think ready to maybe roll the sleeves up and just sort of dig into, make sure we identify the, the data sets uh, that we want to work with. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You need to see that. Yeah. But among that, yeah. you start with one data set. So that you can use it. You can use it. You can show the explorer. It's going to be explorer. Is that everything you need? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, okay, so what we'll do, just, just to, to show you the example, I'll bring up the first, the first data set that we have referenced here from the HOPE project is the uh, baseline HOPE data BAM roll. Let me bring that up real quick here. I uh, know. It's the only external one to it. You want to start with the PL2? Yeah, I've been making it closer, yeah. I'm not going to show you the whole one. There's a whole one. It's a little complicated. 
Okay. So, for example, this particular data set, um, quite a few sheets. It's a it's a it's a part of the baseline sub-Saharan African region. This is, looks like it's at a household level. Um, and it's, I think this is the one that was rainy season pearl millet. And basically, we see there's quite a few sheets that have extensions of different axes. Did you the whole baseline data? Sorry? Did you share the whole baseline data set? Yeah, we have, um, so. For the Hope project, we've got you know, the file, the zip file uh, called Hope Database, and under that folder, we have you know for objective one, two, three, four, and six uh, different geographic regions. So you might bring that up in the Okay, and some sort of folder view. Yeah, um, one just second. To show what that looks like. Um, this is this is one of the um, yeah. This is what you know. One of the sets we've got. Um, this is the, the zipped up uh, Hope database. Uh, we received this uh, back in November. So basically, we've got uh, you know. And again, you know, please feel free to jump in at any time. But uh, for each objective, we've got some baseline surveys, household um, interviews. It looks like. And so what, what we'd like to do is just sort of get from you guys a little bit of a broad overview of each of these data sets. And we can just take notes uh, in our spreadsheet here. Um, <laughs> so, you know, anybody who's familiar with this particular database, um, what we'd like to know is. Jim, are you sharing the Excel sheet of the Hope One? We can't uh, see anything. Okay, sorry here. What happened there? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Is it on each other? Yeah. Right, okay. You guys are both logged in the same logging. Okay. One, one moment. Yeah, no, this is ours. Sharing, he's sharing. Yeah. Yeah, we can see that now. Okay, so are you seeing my uh, fi file file list now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that. Yeah. Do. So um, if, uh, if if we could just get a. Um, you know, the, the, the parameters that uh, Jim went through earlier in terms of, um, you know, well, obviously we know which project that this applies to, um, you know, which objective. We're just trying to get a sense of the geography. Um, we, want to, we want to know what resolution each of these data sets are. And, and we always need to look at this from the perspective of what's the final use going to be of this data set? You know, is it something you want to integrate all of it or some parts of it or some some aggregation of some of this data. So, um, you know, I'll sort of turn it over to whoever is the, uh, uh, you know, the, the owner of that data on your side to maybe talk through a little bit, um, you know, what you would like to see out of out of this these particular data sets. Because this this particular one, this Hope database, looks fairly significant and complete. Uh, quite a few, quite a bit of information arranged by objectives. So part of this is helping us identify what is this data and um, you know, has, has there been updates to it? Will it be updated? Is this the final version of this data and where does it fit in the overall scheme? Can you place anything after that is not Probably it should be George or Alistair. Yeah, this is the whole one. Yeah, hope. Yeah, this is the one. 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 Yeah, this is the one.
Yeah. What are you looking at? Mm -hmm. Maybe after seeing the recording session, probably all this or George will get back to you. Otherwise, when we have the next meeting, then we can have a discussion with them too. Would that be okay? Get back to the next meeting. Sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> yeah. See, the judge is the responsible individual who can confirm this one. So after seeing the recording session, so he will get back to you. Otherwise, we can discuss this part when we have the next meeting that is convenient to Mali for. Would that be okay? Yeah, that'll, that'll be just fine. And um, so, so, so I guess what we want to do is define right now is how, how, do, we, how do we establish a list of all the data? Jim, we have a question from this side. Okay. Oh, uh, Jim. Uh, Gauda here. I was just trying to check since uh, you have this hope project data or uh, the baseline survey, I was thinking whether we can also look at the baseline survey data from the TL2 project as well because then we have a comparison because uh, both baseline survey data are important. This is something that uh, we want to share with the global community, uh, something where many other people will be interested. I think uh, maybe we should do a startup from the baseline data for both the projects, both as well as TL2. So what I'm suggesting is we will check with our uh, social scientists and see if we can get uh, access to the baseline data from the TL2 project uh, must be available in a reasonably good form because even some of the reports uh, have already been uh, at least uh, not published but at least uh, first drafts or second drafts are ready. Would that be okay? Yeah. Yes, I think that's excellent. Um, and we do have some, I believe if you bring it up, we, we do have some, I think, of the TL2 baseline uh, data. We've uh -huh. got the Ethiopia uh, baseline data and we've got the Kenya baseline data for common beings. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all we have right now. Oops. So, yeah. well, I think uh, we also have uh, a big uh, data set for India, for four of the states where uh, we work. So we could also try to get that and start working on that. Okay. Yep, that would be great. Yeah, these yeah, these are the ones that we've seen so far. The Ethiopia baseline, Kenya baseline. Uh is is a label. But yes, I think that'd be a, a very good start is to say, okay, let's just identify all the baseline data and make sure we have the what is the latest version. And, and then how and how complete is it? So I assume you all com the, the baseline data is all complete now. Yeah, at least for TL2, it should be complete because uh, we did the baseline uh, 2008. So it should be already, except for a few new countries that we added where it is ongoing. But that should not matter. We can work on. Uh, the data that we already have on hand. Okay, that's that's excellent. And then this, the data set we have here for Hope. Uh, okay, and that's where you said that you'll have George take a look here and get back to us because again, same thing. We're going to see is it complete um, and and up to date with all the data that's there. But that's good. That, that that's very good. If we can get ourselves with both TL2 and Hope baseline data all together, that's a great start. Then. Um, Just ask if there's any other baseline data that we need to think about. Is you know, that's those were done at the start of the project, so they should be fairly static. Right? We said there's a few being added, but it should be okay. Shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so so we'll we'll look to get those, get that list of the dates and the files associated with the baseline for TL2 and the baseline for Hope. 
Um, okay. Move on to adoption. And then probably the second thing we want to do then is get into uh, the adoption surveys and what what do those look like? Are the adoptions are they um, are they uh, you know those are things that are still ongoing I guess. Which ones? Adoption surveys for Hope and adoption surveys for TL2. So oh, I'm not sure of uh, Hope uh, for uh, TL2. There are some studies have just been initiated, but I think that will take uh, some time before uh, we can get any data to be shared. With multiple adoptions at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and do you know, I guess, the adoption data would be, would there be, I assume, is there, is there a schedule of multiple adoption surveys over periods of time for both projects? Oh, I need to check with our uh, social scientists because uh, as far as I remember, the adoption studies for TL2 are, uh, some of them are yet to start. Okay. I'm going to ask you about um, any mobile technology or system. So. Okay. Yeah. Now, how, uh, your uh, adoption surveys, how are they being, do you know how they're being done? Are, they, are you using any kind of mobile platforms? Are they computers that you're uh, collecting surveys with or by paper or a combination? Uh, most, uh, rather not most, all the data that is being currently collected is on paper. There is no use of uh, handhelds as of now. Okay. And that's, is that good? That's for both projects, TL2 and HOPE? Uh, I can definitely say for TL2, I can't say anything for hope because I'm not aware. But we can assume the same thing, Jim. The team is the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, did, did they have some you know, new templates in the Like maybe after the manual collection, they're going to enter the exception. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so what is your process like, say for the TL2, that you, so you're capturing, doing surveys by, you have templates, I guess, on, on paper, and they're being collected on paper, and then you come back and those are then entered into the spreadsheets? You're yeah. right. Because, uh, see, these are normally done by uh, national program staff who will go into the villages and then collect the data on paper and then uh, they come back and give it to the other people who will enter the data onto the template that are their Excel sheets or whatever it is. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can get back to my video here real quick. Wait, closing anything. One, one moment here. I can't find. There we go. Okay. Now, are you are you back? Can you see our video again now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So basically, that's so the only thing you have to do is to. Okay. So 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 for, for, from a data standpoint, then what we want to we'll do is and we'll summarize after the meeting here, but we we want to as, as quickly as we can see if we can. Uh, get identified all the baseline data and then the schema for your adoption uh, sets. There's what what has been collected and the extent and see if we can't start filling it. Basically we're gonna, we're gonna try to fill that spreadsheet in. It lists the different data sets that are being collected, where they're where they cover the time frame, etc. Yeah. So when when do you think is a reasonable time to try to uh, have all the baseline information together? Since hopefully that's all completed. Well, we'll have to first talk to the people who have uh, those data sets and then confirm to you. So, Abhishek will 
talk to them and then uh, give the message on to delete so that he can confirm to you. Okay. Do, would it be okay if we said say about a, see if we can't push as a uh, an objective is to see if we can get the baseline information resolved uh, or, or figured out in in the next week at least a starter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you have the both data, so you can start working on that. And meanwhile, we should be able to get back to you the current situation on uh, the TL2 Okay. Yes. So, so you think the station is complete? Well, we'll Okay. So, we'll, so, so basically, we'll be working on getting, you'll be working on getting the TL2 baseline gather, data together, and then also we'll just be verifying with George that the baseline that we have for HOPE uh, to make sure that it seems to be complete and, and, and timely. Okay. You're stuck there. Okay. So why don't we move on here? So that's from the data standpoint. Then the, the next slide, of course, is okay. Who is, is identifying the actual users um, and and what information they want you need to be able to push to those users or make available to them. And excuse me. And for this for the project now, we've identified three kind of key profiles: your internal project leaders which would be basically project coordinators, objective leaders, objective coordinators, the so people that, are, that represent the management of the project internally. And then a second kind of class or profile of users is internal researchers. They would be more data heavy, but basically principal investigators, data modelers, agronomists, biometricians, breeders, researchers, research managers, all kind of fall in that category. And a third is kind of an open that we refer to as an internal data liaison. And that's basically someone who would have a very wide range of data capability or access of data to be able to provide for quite a range of other people, anywhere from your partners, for example, national coordinators, researchers, and farm organizations, to external partners like educators, policymakers, NGO advocates, uh, private and public extension workers, press and media, and then anyone else that requires access, but there's no appropriate role to find, or they don't necessarily need to have a login of their own. You just want to be able to provide data to them on, you know, per request. So those are kind of the three initial profiles that we want to optimize you know, access for. Um, any, any general questions or thoughts? So we're, we're trying to basically provide these are the three key roles to access data in the initial and especially the the data liaison is someone who has very uh, very flexible access to facilitate data to just about any type of user or, or, or types of consumers that you would have so the donors and uh, the funding agencies comes under internal data license for example Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation people if they would like to see the data sets, uh, uh, they yeah. come under the internal data license users. Yeah, they would be able to be, uh, basically the, the data liaison would be able to set up feeds to those people. And, and that could be in the form of web links or actual reports that would go to them. And I think down the road, one of the objectives would be to actually have, once we've got that very, very well defined, what information that you want to have available to uh, the Gates Foundation, we'd be able to have them as being users themselves. But for now, what we're looking at is using this liaison as a person that can set up those feeds that go to, to your donors and a lot of other external parties. Oh, if, if I understand correctly, then they don't need the login credentials. They can access the web link and monitor the reports or see the data sets, am I right? That's correct, yes. Oh, wonderful. Then in that case, maybe we can have these 200 users under this internal project lead and the internal researchers. 
That's the maximum capacity according to the contractual agreement. Am I right, Jim? Uh, yes, in fact, yeah, they, it, anyone that's set up as a public user like that, a report, would not count towards your number of users. That's correct. So, so the, uh, you, yeah, your, number, your, your numbered users or named users would just be the ones that fall in these three categories here, your internal project lead, internal researchers, so it's more your internal users of the system. But you'd be able to provide links, external links, that any number of people can uh, can access. So here we're doing a similar thing. Is what we want to be able to do now is start looking at each of these roles and make sure that we're defining the you know the types of information that those people need to have access to and the types of reports. And we want to start getting very very specific about. If there's, if we can enumerate a, a specific reports that, that you want to be able to have access to, plus we'll have some general, I'll say ad hoc, where you'll be able to do some general analysis and general displays. But we want to make sure that some of the specific combinations that, that makes this whole thing very easy to use. And so similarly, we've got a little spreadsheet that we're just kind of gotten started with. That for each of these roles, we want to identify it, and hopefully we're trying to keep parallel so that we've got similar types of roles. It hopefully will work for both projects and, and, and future projects. And these roles that are covered, as we just described, and then start getting into the types of reports that would be required for each of these people. Um, and then do some prioritization, and then uh, and basically how, you know, what types of formats are available as far as printed materials, PDFs, uh, links, uh, et cetera. Um, I think what you know, all we're trying to do here is make sure that you know a lot of this came out of our initial requirements gathering. So you know, we we sort of had identified these roles as um, as, as those that we're you know, trying to provide functionality and workflows and uh, data reports for. So. If uh, you know, we could look at these one at a time and just uh, get any feedback or comments from you about you know the types of reports um, that uh, you know that we foresee um, each of those users requiring. Yeah, we don't have to solve all those problems today, but uh, we just want to sort of get this in get, front of you and, and start sort of get the dialogue started, and we can we can continue this you know with some email. Yeah, and then also, I think it's the kind of thing that you all can discuss some, and we'll have some additional conversations. But maybe it's good just to start with, just say, just, just look at just the internal project lead, so that very first one. So these will be your project coordinators, objective leaders, objective coordinators, so key management and leadership uh, people. And we want to give them an ability to directly access the system, directly access data. And so we want to see what are the reports, what are the key pieces of information that they want to be able to access, you know, at any given time. So as a uh, uh, main one, who's, who's our project lead? Is it CLD? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, in fact, actually, yeah, a good thing to do might be to start with. Let's get a maybe assign a couple of specific names. Let's let's, let's name some of these. So like. Your uh, a project lead, you know, who who would be the, who's, who's the project lead? That'd be like uh, George or Emmanuel, and just say what what are what's the information that they want to be able to have access to? What reports do they want to see? So maybe we can get specific like that. Or is the best way for this is to get each one of them give us two things. Give us a list of what they want to see. I guess you know, unless we have some project managers, project leads, or yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you could ask the lead if you also want the links, and then George and Manuel. That's right, yeah. Um, you can move on to perhaps search you guys, the data manager. Yeah. Okay. Product, I believe, was in the comments, if not, we can do that. 
Yeah. So yeah, are there any uh, any comments at this point, or because basically what we can do is get more specific. We can drop you an email and start getting down. Because what we want to do is just start looking at each of the people who would be using the system, and then making sure that you know what are the specific questions they're going to be asking and responding with, or, or be, what questions they're going to be asking that this that we want to be able to provide you know, appropriate reports in, in, in for. So it's like for each of these key roles. We want to be able to say what are the types of reports, what are the types of information that that, that person personally needs to understand, needs to be able to view in the system. Okay. Jim, in the, in the case, can we assume like the generic platform is already ready, whatever the AWARE platform now we have, and we can start creating these user profiles, and uh, we can get start working on the data management platform to customize for Ecrusat, a uh, TL2, and work process. That's what we are understanding. Otherwise, the, these are at the requirement gathering stage, and we are going to customize this one in later stage. Then these people will get an access to the platform. Where, where are we now? Yeah. So you know, we, we've got the base platform. What we're trying to do here is just uh, understand a little bit better each of the roles. Now, you know, there'll certainly be some functionality that'll be common across all of these roles, and you know, that's part of our base platform today. Um, but you know, there's, there's certainly in the base platform, there's you know, things can features can be turned on and off. Um, access to different data sets can be given. So, you know, we're just trying to get a little bit of an understanding of the differences between these roles and any configuration changes that we might need to make on a per login basis because, you know, each login can be tailored to some aspects of these uh, you know, different role needs. Uh, so, you know, it's all the same, that's fine, but, uh, you know, usually there's a few differences between some of the roles and I think three is an appropriate place to start. Um, like I said, we don't need to solve all these problems today, uh, but just any thoughts or, or comments you might have today would be great. Otherwise, we can revisit it um, at another time as we, as we progress. Okay. So I think... Uh, yeah, yeah that's pretty really much okay. Okay, okay. That sounds good. I mean, project lead, uh, you yeah, know, we don't have, uh, you know, George and Emmanuel in the room, I suppose. So. You know, delete if, if you don't have any further comments on on that role, uh, and uh, you know we could move on to internal researcher, or we could uh, move on to uh, data li liaison and Chuka. If you have any comments on that particular role, would be that would be very helpful. Yeah, don't have any comments. Well, right now I don't have any comments on this. Um, please go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Okay. Right. Really kind of yeah, that we want to talk about here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So I think we just sort of roll into the you know, next steps and um, have some things that uh, they can do on their, on their side, and then you know, we can get into the data that we have right now, and then the data that they have. Uh, have to us and, you know. Yeah. Okay. So really, th this kind of hits at a high level the things that we're wanting to get working on or, or, or get started already and, and get working on now. So this really kind of gets to where we want to be at the moment. So I think our next action items that we want to do is in these two areas. So number one is on the on the data, as we talked about already, we want to look to George to be able to help to make sure that uh, the status of that baseline information and then you all are going to look into, and then, and of course, we already got quite a bit of that baseline data that we're going to start processing and get into. And then from the TL2 standpoint, you're going to be looking at the uh, identifying the baseline data and, again, the status of that. And, and so we'd like to get that data as soon as possible. So basically, the data we want to get identified, and then from the user roles, we'll send you some more, we'll start taking another level here and uh, getting more specific about uh, defining those roles and sending those to you for some feedback. And I think at this point, this kind of kind of at least covers the key issues you wanted to get started with right now, and then we'll be getting back to you these next few days, you know, on follow up on all of these. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good, Jim. And uh, when we when we will have these email communication, what uh, we are going to do, Modi is going to create a list so with all the objective leaders and the project leads and other key personnel. 
So if we can use the same list serve as a communication platform for all these communications, I think that would be wonderful. We can keep track of all our discussions. Would that that'll, be okay? That'll be terrific. That out outstanding. Yeah, and what we'll be also do, we'll set up an FTP site that you'll be able to upload data to. Uh, okay. Just yeah. a question, like, just a quick question. I mean, uh, based on the data that we currently have and that we just sort of briefly went through, is, is there any major, uh, you know, large pieces of data that we're, that we're missing right now, or? Uh, basically, you, know, you guys are going to do a little bit of internal review and assess uh, whether that's the case. But is there anything that stands out right now? Uh, can you repeat your question? Probably, I'd be the right person to respond to this one. Yeah, so um, I think one of the action items is for you all to just have an internal discussion and you know, review the data that we currently have uh, that you've already passed to us. Uh, correct. Okay. I think um, so, Stuart, what happened was that was actually sample data that was passed on to you <coughs> before the Dubai meeting, just to get a feel for what are the different kinds of data sets. So it's by no means a complete data set. Okay. okay. And and again, the thing that happened was different people passed different data sets on to you. So. We, not one person in the room knows all the data sets that you have, so it might be good for you to circulate that list. Right, okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll populate that list with, you know, everything we have. Uh, get yeah, it back exactly. To you. Um, we can and just say whether guys, it's the sample or it's the complete and whether it's the most up-to-date. Right, right. Yeah. And then if you guys could then in turn have a look at that and, uh, you know, provide us, or, or at least populate the spreadsheet first and then actually upload the data to us would be great. Yeah, I think that Okay, so what we'll do is, one of the first actions, we'll get, we, so we'll do that, we'll, we'll uh, get that spreadsheet, we're going to update that, make sure it's as, as current as uh, we have, and make sure we've identified the key things we want to understand by each of the data pieces, and then forward that to you. And then uh, we'll look to start between the two of us then getting that all completed so we know, identify all the different data that we do want to have access to and the dates associated with them, et cetera. Yeah, and so we can we can version that spreadsheet, upload it to the FTP site so you get, you know, that's, that's where that will sit. And, and when you, whenever you update that spreadsheet, just, you know, give it a new version number or a new code. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it's been okay. a, good, a good first Stab and then and uh, we'll be yes so yeah as soon as you can all get that list served together that'd be terrific in the meantime we'll we'll start uh, you know getting getting some information back to you to uh, see if we can start pushing forward because we we'd like to keep a good aggressive uh, attitude at this point and move move quickly. So are, are we going to receive the login credentials or some kind of access information to the FTP site, Jim? And we can see yeah, the, yeah. the data available yes. data site. Yes, we'll send so you. The, we'll send you the location and access credentials. Yes. And uh, everybody can have these access credentials and uh, access the FTP site. Uh, how does that work? Like all the people can access one time. Or? Uh, we, can, we can do, you know, it's up to you. We can do a single login for everybody or we can do individual logins. I, I assume, is, is all of the data going to uh, go through uh, Chuka? Is that really the, the main uh, person who would be uploading data? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good because that, that, that's the one, like, maybe if, if only if we have one person who monitors and coordinates with everybody and confirms the available data sets. And yeah. That, that might be a very good way to start, yes. Thank you. Okay. So, Chuka, you're the man. <laughs> okay. So, I guess we're, oh, so yeah. we're good. And I'll, we'll do, we'll, I'll follow up with you here with some email to confirm a few things and we'll, so we can kind of keep moving forward. Delete. Wonderful. Okay, well thank you very much for uh, being with us. Thank you for setting up all this good technology. Uh, okay. and
Thank you so much, Jim, for your flexibility to have this meeting even late evening. I think this might be 10 o'clock for you guys. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank uh, we're, 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 we're night owls here. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, we can stop the cat hey, now. Thanks a lot. We'll talk.